Okay, for 13a, we want to find the inverse uh, if the original function was the fifth root of 3x plus 5. Okay, so in the notes I talked about there's a, a four-step process that you go through uh, in order to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and follow those four steps. The first step would be replace the f of x with a y. So I have y equals fifth root of 3x plus 5. The next step when you're finding an inverse is you need to switch the x and the y. So I'll put an x here and a y inside. So I want to switch those. After that, what you want to do is solve for y. So that would be your step three is, is solving for y. Now in order to solve for y, we want to get rid of the, the root that's there. And since that's a fifth root, we want to do the, uh, we want to raise both sides to the fifth power. That way it will cancel out the root that's there. So we have x to the fifth. And then what will happen is, if you raise that right hand side to the power of five, the five exponent would cancel out with that one and leave you just with this one here. So both sides, we raise it to a power of five. And we got that. We still need to solve for y. So we're going to subtract the five. So x to the fifth minus five equals three y. And then you would divide both sides by 3, and you get x to the fifth minus 5 over 3 equals y. What you would put for your final answer, and this would be step number 4, is you want to use the proper inverse notation there. So that replaced, the y gets replaced with the inverse notation, and we just write x to the fifth minus 5 over 3. And so then this would be your final answer. So you don't have to worry about doing a check. That means you don't have to try and plug this one into here and this one into there and cancel out and see if you get x on both sides. You can do that if you have extra time on your test, but it's not asking you that uh, on the test itself. It's only going to ask you to find the inverse, uh, which will be this one here. Okay, for 13b, we have another inverse one, but this time it looks a little bit different. This one we have a fraction one. These are solved a little bit different way, which is why I wanted to show you one of these uh, examples because this is possible to be on the test as well. Alright, so if we do this one again, we're going to follow the same four steps for finding the inverse. The first thing would be to replace the f of x with a y. So I have y equals 3x minus 2 over 2x minus 1. Next thing you want to do is switch the x and the y. So everywhere I see a y, I'm going to put an x. Everywhere there was an x, I'm going to put a y. So this, what will happen over here is now we're going to get uh, two y's over there. Now the idea here is to solve for y. Now first what we need to do is get rid of the fraction. So we can either multiply both sides of the equation by 2y minus 1 or we can also cross multiply. Now if you cross multiply you multiply this diagonal together so x times 2y minus 1 and that's going to equal the other diagonals multiplied together. 3y minus 2. Okay. Now the idea is you want to get all of the y's to one side of the equation. So the first thing I'd have to do here is clear out the parentheses. So I'm going to do 2xy minus x and then I have 3y minus 2. We want to move the, this term, this y, over to the other side. So I have 2xy. I'm going to subtract this 3y and move it over to the left. So I get 2xy minus 3y. Just moving that over to the left-hand side. Now the x that's here, since that doesn't have a y in it, I want to move that one over to the other side of the equation. So if I move that across the equal sign, change the signs. So it was negative x. It's going to become positive x. So I have a positive x minus 2. Okay, so once I have it to where I have both the y's on one side of the equation, what I'm now going to do is factor out a y from both of these. So I'm going to factor out a y, and I get 2x minus 3 left over, and then I still have x minus 2 on the other side. The reason why you want to factor out the y is because that way both the y's turn into 1, and now you can, you can divide both sides by 2x minus 3. You want the y by itself, so this is the one you're going to be dividing by, and you'll get x minus 2 over 2x minus 3. And then the very last thing you would do is when you write your answer, make sure you use the proper 
inverse notation, x minus 2, 2x minus 3, and then that right there would be your final answer. So these kind of problems with fractions, they have a special process. Make sure you understand how to do these kind of problems because, again, this type of problem could also be on the test. So uh, cross multiply, get all the y's on one side, factor out a y, and then divide, and that's going to give you your answer.